Now, it's International Women's Day today, and it's a mark of how mainstream an event with roots in early 20th century socialism has become that even Tory MPs are asking the Prime Minister questions about it. Here's our unlikely feminist, Mark Pritchard MP, raising the subject with David Cameron earlier this week. On the 8th of March, we celebrate International Women's Day. Would the Prime Minister join me in calling upon the Indian and Pakistani governments to do more to uphold the rights of women and to advance the, the gender agenda. No, I think my honourable friend is absolutely right to raise this, and I think there are some particular issues we should really focus on, and that is uh, female genital mutilation, which is a completely unacceptable practice that we need to deal with right across the world, but including here in the United Kingdom, and we'll be making an announcement about that. But we should also do more to crack down on the completely unacceptable practice of forced marriages. There are still forced marriages taking place right here with people involved from the United Kingdom, and we need to do more to put a stop to it. And we're joined to discuss International Women's Day and the future of feminism by Laura Bates from the Everyday Sexism Project and academic Catherine Hakim. Welcome to you both. Let's stick uh, to the condition and position of women in Britain to begin with uh, and then move on to the wider international situation. Uh, is feminism still a relevant agenda with much still to achieve in Britain in 2013? Well, I have always taken the view that feminism is here to stay in the sense that it informs young women's attitudes which take their rights for granted, they feel they have a voice, they feel they have a place in the public, uh, public life, and in that sense it lives on and is permanent. But as a social movement and as a campaigning social movement, I think it's dead in the sense that very few young women nowadays think that it has anything uh, that to say to them personally. Laura Bates, what do you say to that? Um, well, I think you're wrong. I've been going up and down the country in just the last week speaking at these hundreds of brand new feminist societies are springing up at are universities they? across the country. King's College London, for example, it's brand new feminist society. They didn't even used to have a women's officer on the student union and now they're preparing to celebrate Women's History Month for the first time ever. Well. You have to uh, look at facts in a wider context. At the moment, we have an Equalities Commission, which is about pre uh, uh, preventing discrimination, not just against women, but against everybody. And they carried out a survey to, and asked, uh, do you feel discriminated against? And about half of all women said, yes, I feel that I have been discriminated against. And that was uh, pr um, pr publicized as a major finding. But they were a little bit dishonest. They didn't tell you all the rest of the results. The results also showed that half of all men feel discriminated against, half of all whites feel discriminated against, as well as half of all blacks feeling discriminated against. So we're all against. being discriminated half against. Half of, of the young people if felt we're all being discriminated, discriminated against, who's doing the discriminating? So we're talking about a level right, playing field. But let, when you go to these new societies you're talking about mm. and younger women getting involved in the feminist movement, what are the headlines of their agenda today? We know what the agenda was in the 60s and 70s, some of which, not all, but some of which has been achieved. Mm -hmm. So what is a feminist agenda in Britain? come to international in a minute, in Britain for the 21st century? Well, I certainly think it's really important that, you know, I absolutely cannot agree that feminism has no further to go and that equality hasn't been won. And that's one of the major headline points, I think, that these young women, but also other women across the country, are standing up and saying it's time for us to achieve equal representation in Parliament. It's time for us to achieve better representation at the tops of big businesses. But young women are also standing up about things which impact on them individually. And huge numbers of schoolgirls and women at university have been writing into us saying I've had enough of being shouted at in the street. I've had enough of going out to a bar or a club and spending an evening with friends and actually having strangers come up and feel they have the right to touch me and grope me. We've collected 25,000 women's experiences of that kind Maybe of Maybe they thing. just shouldn't go to Lib Dem conferences. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's but really... I mean, it's interesting that, that's the, that, 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 that are some of the issues that you're talking about. Um, and of course, that's been an issue for women throughout the ages. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the issues of you're still way underrepresented in Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, you're particularly underrepresented in the Lib Dems, and on company, on corporate boards, you're way underrepresented as well. Are these issues that now matter to younger people as well? Is it being safe to go to a pub and have a drink without being pestered? 
Yeah, absolutely, because I think these things are filtering down. I mean, just this week we've seen the story of the world-class debaters who, when they tried to take part in a very prestigious debating competition at the Glasgow University Union, were heckled, shouted down and screamed at because of nothing to do with what they were saying, mm. but just because of their sex. And these young women are standing up and saying, we won't accept that anymore. There still seems, if you listen to Laura, there's a long way to go and uh, an agenda that will keep feminists busy for the rest of this century? I think women are inclined to expect that uh, equality for women means some sort of social utopia is going to be uh, offered. Well, that's not the real world. Maybe just fairness rather than utopia. All they fun. want, uh, all that can be delivered by legislation and good policy is equal opportunities, and it's a tough world out there. It's a very competitive world, and I think a lot of young women are not really uh, are prepared for the degree to which that's true. And one of the most interesting results that's been published recently in the Financial Times today is a study uh, globally looking at um, women's achievement of top management jobs around the world. And what's interesting and I think is probably the, the, the case, even though their measure is a little bit wonky, um, is that women are more likely to achieve top management positions in the BRIC countries, in Brazil, so India, countries. Russia and China, than in the highly developed economies of the Western yeah. world. And we have yeah. this idea that we're way ahead of the game. But they may but also actually, more likely to be suppressed What well. we're doing in the Western world are offering women real choices real choices to stay at home and be full-time ha mothers, full-time housewives, if that's what they want. Real choice to be part-time workers and have All a right. job but not a career, or to be careerists, but that's Sue. a choice. Sue. I must say, I have a lot of sympathy with that. I think, uh, of course, it's, it would be nice to see yet more women in Parliament, although the position has improved, but I do think that women, girls, have got to get off their bottoms, not get together in a great group and have a movement for more women, the Women's Party. They need to stand as individuals for whatever party uh, they want to. Well, I I, think and I also agree with you that uh, uh, often we're behind other countries, even behind, I mean, Norway is much better than us at putting women on boards, for instance. Oh, they had legislation and you have, for that. Yes, they did, and I think Spain's going to and as well. Kevin, and, and then I'll come yeah. back in. And politically, Labour had women-only shortlists. Mm. That's how you make the leap, uh, the I, leap that's forwards. actually what changed Parliament. It's it not is the Conservatives mm. or the Liberals. No, it's Labour having Harriet Harman and others. But you've got to remember, my grandmother couldn't vote, mm. and so we have moved forward. But then women are still, you know, paid. Are you, to are like you allowed to vote? Twenty. I am allowed. How to vote. did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. What do you <laughs> say, uh, Laura? I think it's camera. extremely disingenuous, really, on, in both cases, to suggest that women are to blame for their own lack of equality. Whilst it's true that, of course, women do have to stand up and put themselves forward, women are doing that actually, and we've seen that huge numbers of women in those business situations and in Parliament, take Labour MP Stella Creasy, for example, who, when she's standing up and asking questions in Prime Minister questions, receives tweets from people asking her to get her jugs out. So women are still facing an enormous amount of dis discrimination and harassment. I spoke the other day to Emily Thornbury, the Labour MP, and she said that when she was running for office eight years ago, she received so many death threats because she was a woman running for Parliament. She had to move her yeah. children yeah. Women out of Tory her home. Yeah. But so, you're never going to stop men sometimes leering at women. I mean, that is the way of the world, well, I'm afraid. Well, you've both it's, said it's that's the, the way of the world, and I'm afraid I'm not prepared to accept. When you look at the fact that research no, just this week well, has shown that we have the highest level of young girls in this country at risk of female genital mutilation of anywhere in Europe, that over a million women experienced domestic violence last year, that over 400,000 are sexually assaulted each year and 80,000 raped each year, I'm afraid I'm not prepared to sit I here and say that there's no further it. for the I feminist movement, movement to go, and that's well, just the way she's are. young and ready, perhaps, to change it and not put up with what and previous so thousands generations of other young women wanted in this country to do. Today. Can I just bring in the international scene? Because you can have an argument about how far women's rights have gone in Britain and how much further they still have to go. There are still horrendous examples of uh, maltreatment and discrimination against women in countries like China, India, Pakistan, correct? There is a well, big there fight was the recent rape there. in India which uh, attracted world attention, yes. 
That's it. Just yes. And one in three William, women on the planet will be subjected to rape or violence in the course of her lifetime. We're not just and talking about one case. Female genital yes, mutilation, which the Prime Minister referred to, regularly expanded to mean almost anything, including occasional touching. This well, is now, the trouble with some of the statistics that you used. Should say that because you know, that under they, the law in this country, if somebody touches you in a sexual way without your consent, that is defined as sexual assault. And yet, as we've seen recently in the media, when these stories come up. We see countless articles, TV shows saying, should women just put up with a bit of touching or, you know, is a grope here or there really such a big deal? Well, hang on, this is something women are protected from under the law. It's defined as sexual assault and yet here we are sitting around debating whether women should just put up with it. They're protected from it by law. It's the social attitudes that need to change and that's why feminism is such a lively movement today. Okay, well, you've come on on International Women's Day and told us what you're doing. That's great. Thank you to both of you for that uh, discussion.